Factor by grouping. Let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So factor by grouping is a super powerful tool, um, so it's totally worth knowing how to do. So basically, when you're doing factor by grouping, you just pick two terms. So the natural thing to do is to pick these two here. And say, okay, what is the greatest common factor? What do they have in common that we can pull out? Well, B. So you go ahead and pull out the B. So B, and then parentheses, and then you look here at AB and you say, what's missing? What do you have to multiply by B in order to get AB? Well, you're missing the A. And you can check your work, and you should. If you multiply B times A, you're going to get BA, but that's the same thing as AB. And then plus, and then here you're trying to get B. So what do you multiply by B in order to get B? Well, just one. And so we've accomplished our, our first goal. Now we look over here. We say, hey, what can we factor out? It looks like a 2, because there's a 2 on both terms. So you put a plus 2 here. And then here we have, uh, let's see, what do you multiply um, by 2 in order to get um, 2a? Well, it looks like a. And likewise here, what do you multiply by 2 in order to get 2? Well, it looks like just 1. All right, good stuff. So now what we can do is we have a common factor here, just like before. Now our greatest common factor is a plus 1. So you can actually pull that out. So you pull it out like this, a plus 1. Now if these are different, game over, right? You did it wrong, or factor by grouping won't work. So, um, so like if you had a plus 2, a plus 4, you can't really do anything. So they have to be the same. That's the goal. All right, so now we're going to factor this out. And again, we ask the question, what do we multiply by a plus 1? in order to get b times a plus 1. Well, we're just missing a b. So it's like you just write what's missing. Same thing here. What do you multiply by a plus 1 in order to get 2 times a plus 1? Well, you're just missing a 2, so you put a 2 here. And that would be the final answer. And I'll write it one more time. a plus 1 times b plus 2. Another way to do it, by the way, some people do it this way, and sometimes I do it this way. Let me just show you. Say you had b a plus 1 plus 2a plus 1. You can factor this out and you can put it on the right. So it would look like this, a plus 1. And then you just take this one and this one. So it'll be b plus 2. That's a little bit more unnatural, so I think most people don't um, explain it this way. But you could do that and it does check, right? If you do, that, that shouldn't be there. If you do a plus 1 times b, you get a plus 1 times b. If you do a plus 1 times 2, you get a plus 1 times 2. Yeah, it feels a little bit more unnatural. I like the way I did it first. I hope this video has been helpful.